So here we are, 2019, currently on our way to do a ASP session. Basically, a cone with a field dubbed as death session. And how I ended up here is, um, I do OCR for a living, OCR or obstacle course racing. It is the biggest and happening thing currently around in the world of adventure fitness. The first time I heard about Warrior, I was in the gym. This guy sitting on the cycling bike next to me, spinning his, spinning himself blue, it's just sweat all over and he's like, he's training for this thing called Warrior Race. I'm like, Warrior Race sounds crazy, what is it? And he's like, no, it's just this thing where you run and you jump in the mud and you carry stuff. And it's like, it sounds crazy, why would you do that? It's like, no, it's a lot of fun, you should try it. And I was, first I just you know, bluffed it off but then later I was training for 94.7 cycle challenge and um, as uh, Murphy had it I went on a cycle route and I got two flats so here I am pushing my bike humbled two flat punchers and there's this bunch of crazy guys running past me out of the blue basically looked like they're coming out of the bush covered in mud amped with animal like Themes, just screaming Wah! and I'm like what are you guys doing I know I look weird pushing my cycle my bike pushing my bike next to the road but you guys taking looking weird to the next level what are you doing and they're like no warrior and they run off into the bush and I was like okay no this warrior thing is some kind of trade catching on and at that time I was taking kickboxing quite serious and the kickboxing club mentioned go do doing a warrior race this was the back end of 2013 about November and we signed up for a warrior race it was a uh, close to century and somewhere and i did my first uh, rookie with some friends from the kickboxing club and as i was doing it there was this like i don't know i just want to call it animal instinct wrong word but this just childish excitement of running around and jumping in the mud and climbing over stuff and just doing it with all your mates and as i finished it uh, i remember seeing michael hubert coming over the finish line, winning the, the first Warrior Series. And there was this thought in my head of, you know, doing this as a sport or taking it seriously. And I thought to myself, no, okay, cool. I'm gonna enter the next one, the first one, 2014, and I'm gonna go all, all in. I remember entering, sitting there, I'm entering and there's, there's a tab, you can click Elite or just Black Ops. And I had this image in my head of Elite. Elite is like this, this pedestal, this thing, you know, people up there are like, on their own level and I thought okay no no I'm not ready for this whole elite thing I'm gonna go just black ops so I entered black ops started in the the first batch behind the elite about 10 minutes behind um, I remember it clearly starting the venue was higher safari in Millers Drift uh, start of 2014 on the start line the elites went off and I started in the first batch behind 10 minutes I started chasing them down and eventually I don't know where I was position wise just like passing people and pop people's passing you and as I came into the last two obstacles, I, this marshal's telling me, go, 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 you're in second place. I'm like, what? I'm in second place? That's crazy, can't be in second place. So they're like, no, seriously, you're in second place. I'm like, okay, well, this is really good. So I started chasing this, the next, next obstacle, I asked the marshal, like, how far is this first guy? And they're like, no, you'll never catch him. You'll never catch him. He's like, ah, 10 minutes, you'll never catch him. And then, <laughs> yeah, and actually, ironically, grew into one of my good mates, JJ Daisel. So he was the first warrior legend um, crushing the first races. He was the first, uh, the Daisel. You'll never catch him. Yeah, that was quite funny. So I finished the first race, um, second place overall, but I couldn't get podium because of not entering elite. So basically, second race 2014 entered elite and came second again. And I think after that, I won two in a row. Somewhere in 2014, I won three in a row. It's, yeah. A light came on saying, Thomas, this is your sport. This is what you should be training for. And um, that's where the seed of beast mode started. So from there, um, Warrior Race in general, OCR over the world has basically exploded, grown exponentially um, into the sport that it is today, aiming at Olympics in the future years. And to kind of put it in perspective from how far it's come, 
if I have to race myself from four years ago, it would be a walk in the park. I think the level of competitivity in OCR has just exploded. The level locally, the level internationally, stuff like World Champs or World Stuff as Mother, or it's become an iconic sport on its own. So locally, the Oto Warrior Race taking the lead in um, pioneering what OCR is in South Africa. Currently the biggest series in Africa, they have even have a race in Namibia. Um, so as a shout out, I'll have to say kudos to the sponsors getting in behind it. Um, people like Toyota with their reach and their, their enthusiasm and their adventurous style kind of fit in well with the Warrior Race. So this year, 2019 ahead, is going to be a massive year for OCR. I think we're aiming at the highest numbers we've, we've seen in, uh, in, in attendance over the last couple of years. And internationally, the biggest race that I'm aiming at is OCR World Championships, London, uh, October 2019. So that'll be the target race. Last year, I got a fourth place um, uh, in the 3K elite and a 15K, I got an eighth place elite. So that gives four years top 10 elite in the world. And even that event has grown from about five to 10 countries to, I think we were 72 countries in 2018 World Championships. So it basically, statistically, OCR is the fastest growing sport in the world. So looking forward to what it holds for 2019. Um, gonna go beast mode, gonna go all in and yeah, leave my heart on the field, see where it goes. So happy to announce that I will be taking on 2019 as an official Toyota brand ambassador in support of Toyota Warrior Race and just the Toyota adventurous lifestyle. So ready for it, cool. I think if I have to design a car, the first thing that I put in would be cup holders. I can't need a cup holder. Doesn't matter if it's four x four, if it's two x four, if it flies or drives, a big petrol diesel or whatever, it needs a cup holder. Look at this thing, it has like cup holders everywhere. It has one over here, it has like a cup holder in the door, it has like cup holder, okay, it's a cell phone holder now, but it's cup holders for days. I was driving a 1995 Toyota RAV4 for the last six years. And if I have to describe the service that that car has given me, I don't know what to call it. Uh, yes, we have taken that thing, anything from Cape Town to mountaintop to just like crazy off-roading over the Mahalis to just casual road tripping, that car. It has kind of become a lifetime companion. So currently sitting in the 2018 Toyota Fortuner to see where they started and where they're going. Ah, happy days, eh? happy days. It's almost like you're watching a Transformer movie and then this like old car turns into this super cool, super futuristic car. Yeah, kind of that's, that's kind of how I'll explain it. Um, so my car's name is Khrini. It's like this little green monster. And yeah, kudos and much respect to it, but very happy for what the future holds. So made it through the ASP session alive. I'm about to cruise back home in style with this bad boy behind me. So just actually a shout out to everyone out there living the warrior lifestyle, getting off the couch, getting stuff done. It's 2019, it's the start of the year and it's going to be epic. So shout out to everyone that's putting in the hard yards. I'll see you on the battlefields at Warrior One. And yeah, let's take on Toyota Warrior Race number one, 2019. So excited, see you out there.